دكتورة كانك مسكر المايك هيك سمعيني تمام؟ اه دكتورة هيك تمام بس ما كنا نسمع آه. أول إشي تمام خلص هلا بعيد من أول اوكي سوري تمام سكند لكتشر السكرين واضحة عندكم تمام اه دكتورة واضحة تمام ناو The second lecture is about propulsion and mixing of the food in the gastrointestinal system. Uh, نبلش uh, في عنا two mechanisms اللي بتحدد لي amount and the type of the food taken by human. So your hunger determines the amount of food you wanted, how much food you take, depends how much you are hungry, and the appetite determines the type of food you needed. شو uh, بتشتهي uh, بتحدد نوعية الأكل. Those important central mechanisms that determine the amount and the type of food taken by the human. The first step in the gastrointestinal digestion and absorption uh, digestion is the chewing process or mastication. And this process starts at the mouth and it is mediated by two structures, the teeth and jaw muscles. Most importantly, the anterior teeth, the incisors are important for cutting the food And the posterior ones uh, or the molars ones are important for grinding the food. Also, jaw muscles are involved, involved in the process of mastication. Now, why chewing is important? Chewing is important because it is uh, involved in the breakdown of uh, cellulose. And cellulose is not digested at the human uh, gastrointestinal tract. So, This structure needs to be destructed at the mouth, so we're exposing more internal nutrients and substances for the process of uh, digestion and absorption. So destruction of the cellulose starts at the mouth and it's at the mouth and it is really important for the uh, remaining process of digestion. By chewing, the surface area of the foods exposed to the digestive enzymes are increased. So this is, will increase the digestion rate. And chewing also mixes the food with saliva, and this is gives lubrication and make it easier for swallowing. And also, as I said, begins the digestion of some substances such as starch, which is started uh, di uh, to be digested at the mouth by enzyme called alpha amylase, and it's a kind of salivary enzy uh, enzyme. Also, triglycerides are also started to be digested at the mouth level by enzyme called lingual lipase. Also, chewing prevents the excoriation of the gastrointestinal system, so this gives a protective effect for the mucosa and mouth lining and the gastrointestinal lining, and it improves the food emptying of the stomach. Much more digested or uh, A grinded food at the mouth will make it easier for the stomach to empty the food's content. Now, um, the chewing is regulated by uh, nervous uh, mechanisms. First of all, uh, the uh, chewing process is regulated by nuclei in the brain stem. And uh, the motor branch of the fifth cranial nerve uh, innervates the muscles of mastication. So, the uh, stimulation of the reticular areas in the brain stem or at the taste centers results in rhythmical chewing movements, consecutive movements that initiate the chewing process. And also other areas in the brain, like in the hypothalamus, in the amygdala, and the cerebral cortex, All these areas near the taste and smell centers also add a neuronal control for the process of chewing. All these area stimulation also will stimulate the process of chewing. Most importantly to know that the chewing is a reflex mechanism and has both two components, inhibitory and excitatory. Um, this, uh, when the food is inside the mouth cavity, this would result in inhibition or relaxation of the muscles of mastication through the uh, fifth cranial nerves and this will result in jaw drop so the mouth will open 
opening of the mouth or dropping of the jaw will result in a stretch reflex that will result in rebound contraction of the muscles of mastication again. So this will result in closing the mouth or uh, uh, jaw rise and then tooth closure, pushing the food inside the mouth cavity. And this is uh, a repetitive action. So it's a kind of uh, consecutive or um, consecutive a contraction and relaxation of the muscles of mastication, uh, resulting in the initiation of the uh, chewing reflex. The second part of this lecture is talking about the swallowing process or deglutition. And this process is really, really important because the pharynx serve both respiration and swallowing process. So uh, the um, Mm, the process of respiration not to be inhibited too long or disrupted is really important to prevent choking during the swallowing process. And this um, uh, stage uh, or the swallowing is divided into three important stages uh, through which the food moving from the mouth down to the stomach. The first stage is voluntary and it is initiated by the presence of food in the mouth. So the food is pulled backward and upward against the palate using the tongue. And this is the first stage of uh, swallowing. And it is voluntary stage. Once the food passed to the posterior part of the fer pharynx, this results in involuntary two stages of swallowing, which include the pharyngeal stage and the esophageal one. The pharyngeal stage includes the passage of food movement from the pharynx into the esophagus, while the esophageal stage involves the downward movement of food from uh, the pharynx to the stomach. It's important to know the changes that happen during the swallowing process. So the respiration would not be affected. No food will enter into the respiratory system and um, this uh, keep the uh, airway clean and uh, prevent the presence of suffocation. So once the food in the pharynx, there is a tactile stimulation of swallowing receptors in the area of the oropharynx. And these signals will go to the brain stem, resulting in several automatic pharyngeal contractions. So these muscle contractions are automatic, involuntary. The first most important one is that the soft palate will be pulled upward. This will clo close the posterior nares and prevent the food movement into the nose. Also, the mouth will block, the tongue will block the mouth, so the food will not go back into the mouth. This is the first uh, muscle contractions that happen during the pharyngeal stage of swallowing. The soft palate will block the posterior nares. The second kind of muscle contractions involve the palatopharyngeal folds. Um, these folds at the lateral side, they become approximated, which means they, this this uh, opening in the posterior pharynx will be narrowed. So this will focus the food only to the posterior pharynx. The food will not go any sideways. And um, it is important to direct the food to the posterior pharynx, sorry, the pharynx. After this stage, and the most important part of, is the closure of the trachea, closure of the airways, so no food passing to the airways. And at this stage, the respiration is inhibited for a few seconds. Um, the vocal cords will be approximated and closed the trachea. The larynx will be pulled upward and anteriorly, and the epiglottis will cover the larynx, so the food won't pass into the airway. Following this step, the upper esophageal sphincter will relax. So this will receive the food from the pharynx into the upper part of the esophagus. Usually the upper esophageal structure or uh, sphincter is strongly contracted between the swallows. During normal restal conditions, the upper esophageal uh, sphincter is constricted. This prevents air movement 
into the gastrointestinal system. So the air only directed to the trachea. Um, and during uh, the swallowing, this upper esophageal sphincter will be relaxed and the food will go into the uh, esophagus. Now, uh, uh, waves of peristaltic contractions will move the food from the pharynx into upper part of the esophagus. Now, this is um, a video uh, showing you the process just, just to make sure that the sound is okay. Swallowing. Samin, so much about. video, so much. Tamam. is the process by which food. Swallowing or deglutition is the process by which food passes from the mouth through the pharynx and into the esophagus. As simple as it might seem to healthy people, swallowing is actually a very complex action that requires an extremely precise coordination with breathing. It does, and it's a very complex process that needs coordination between the oral cavity, the pharynx, and the trachea. Since both of these processes share the same entrance, the pharynx, failure to coordinate it would result in choking or pulmonary aspiration. Swallowing involves over 20 muscles of the mouth, throat, and esophagus, which are controlled by several cortical areas and by the swallowing centers in the brainstem. The brain communicates with the muscles through several cranial nerves. Swallowing consists of three phases. Oral or buccal phase. This is the voluntary part of swallowing. The food is moistened with saliva and chewed. Food bolus is formed and the tongue pushes it to the back of the throat, the pharynx. This process is under neural control of several areas of cerebral cortex, including the motor cortex. Pharyngeal phase starts with stimulation of tactile receptors in the oropharynx by the food bolus. The swallow reflex is initiated and is under involuntary neuromuscular control. The following actions are taken to ensure the passage of food or drink into the esophagus. The tongue blocks the oral cavity to prevent going back to the mouth. The soft palate blocks entry to the nasal cavity. The vocal folds close to protect the airway to the lungs. The larynx is pulled up with the epiglottis flipping over covering the entry to the trachea. This is the most important step. Um, just to recap, the soft, the soft palate will close the posterior nerve so the food won't go to the nose. The tongue will block the oral cavity so the food won't go back to the mouth. And most importantly, the epiglottis, the larynx, will move upward and uh, anteriorly. And this will move the epiglottis covering the tracheal opening so the food won't go into the uh, respiratory pathway. Since entry of food or drink into the lungs may potentially be life-threatening, the upper esophageal sphincter opens to allow passages to the esophagus. Esophageal phase. Food bolus is propelled down the esophagus by peristalsis, a wave of muscular contraction that pushes the bolus ahead of it. The larynx moves down back to the original position. As we said that the swallowing process is strictly controlled so the by neuronal uh, um, mechanisms and the pharyngeal phase which we said that it is starting voluntary but once the food in the posterior pharynx it's gonna be involuntary um, the pharyngeal phase lasts for about six seconds and uh, as we said that there is a tactile stimulations of the uh, epithelium at this area of the pharynx mainly most sensitive parts are present at the tonsillar pillars and this will go through the sensory portions of the trigeminal and the glossopharyngeal nerves to the swallowing center in the medulla oblongata this will carry a uh, efferent nerve fibers from the swallowing centers to the uh, uh, through the uh, these nerves, the fifth cranial nerves, the ninth, 
the uh, 10th and the 12th with the superior cervical nerves to the pharynx and upper esophagia uh, to uh, uh, regulate the peristalsis process. And it's important to know that the swallowing center sends inhibitory signals to the respiratory center during the process of swallowing to inhibit the respiration for like a, a, a short, very short uh, duration. Now, uh, the esophageal stage of swallowing, which is the third stage of swallowing, uh, composed of two kinds of peristalsis. The first type is the primary one, and it's continuation of the pharyngeal swallowing peristalsis. The peristalsis that started the pharynx moves into the esophagus. And this process takes about eight to 10 seconds and it is aided by the gravity. So while the, the human uh, swallowing in the upright position, the gravity will add more. So this will make it uh, quicker than uh, lying if the primary peristalsis in the uh, esophi or in the pharynx uh, fail to push the food down to the esophagus, there is a second wave of peristalsis called secondary peristalsis. And these kind of peristalsis stimulated by distension of the esophagus. And this is going to be repeated until the food is pushed down to the, uh, down the esophagus to the uh, stomach. And this is initiated by the myenteric nervous system of the gastrointestinal system. So it's uh, initiated by a kind of intrinsic nervous stimulation plus vagal reflexes starting in the pharynx and going into the middle, like going back through the glossopharyngeal and the vagal nerves to the esophagus, initiating a second wave of peristalsis to push the food off, uh, down the uh, esophagus. It's important to know that the structural anatomy of the esophagus, that the upper one third of the esophageal muscles are a kind of striated muscles, and it's innervated by the glossopharyngeal and vagal nerves, while the lower esophagus or the lower two thirds is composed of smooth muscle, and uh, they are innervated by the mentoric nervous system, uh, which is enough for the uh, motility in this part of uh, esophagus. However, it has extra innervation from the vagus nerve. However, if the vagus nerve innervation is cut to the lower esophagus, the myenteric nervous system is okay to work by itself and it, ca it can uh, regulate its movement. Now, after the food is going down through the esophagus, it's going to go to the stomach. And the stomach should be prepared to uh, receive this food. At the lower end of the esophagus, there is a, a sphincter called the lower esophageal sphincter or gastroesophageal sphincter. And this uh, kind of sphincter is uh, surrounded by a thick muscle, which is tunically constricted. And the rest is always constricted. And there is a pressure of 30 millimercury at that uh, level. Also, there is a valve-like closure of the lower esophagus, and these two important mechanisms are important to prevent acid reflux to the esophagus. The gastric contacts are acidic, and uh, the esophagus is not prepared to, uh, to deal with acidic media. So these two structures or um, mechanisms are important to prevent the reflux of the acidic material protecting the esophageal mucosa. So this lower esophageal sphincter need to be relaxed in order to food to pass through and go into the stomach. And this is a, um, called receptive relaxation of the stomach. Um, this is conducted by a kind of myenteric relaxation of genum, resulting in uh, foods received from the esophagus. So it's important to for the lower esophageal sphincter to relax, for the stomach to relax, and the duodenum as well to relax to receive the food from the esophagus. Now we're going to talk about the motor function of the stomach, how the smooth muscle of the stomach works, kind of movements and motility is there. Uh, we know that the anatomic, anatomically, the stomach is divided into three parts, the fundus, the body, and the antrum. 
we are concerned with the physiologic division of the stomach and it's divided into two types or two parts, the orad, which means, uh, orad means toward the mouth or the proximal part of the structure. Uh, it is composed of the first two thirds of the body and the caudad, which is composed of the distal one third of the body plus the antrum. Now, the first function of the muscle of the stomach is storage of the food and it's mainly stored at the orad area. Now, when the food comes into the stomach, there is a stretch reflex within the stomach wall. This will result in a uh, simulation of vagovagal reflex going from the stomach into the brainstem and coming back to the stomach, resulting in stomach relaxation and outward bulging. This will increase the capacity, increase the volume uh, of the stomach to receive more food. Usually, the capacity of the stomach is ranging between 0.8 to 1.5 liter, and at this level, the pressure remains low. Yeah. Shuma, uh, up to 1.5 liter inside the stomach, the pressure will stay low until this uh, capacity is uh, approached. The other function of the smooth muscle of the stomach is mixing of the food with the gastric secretions. So once the food inside the stomach, the stomach will start to secrete some digestive substances to start the process of digestion. Mixing the food with uh, the gastric secretions uh, form the chyme inside the stomach. And the chyme fluidity depends on different factors, such amount of food, how much food you ingested, the amount of water, too much water, more liquidy, less water, less liquidy, amount of the gastric secretions, more secretion, more liquidy chyme, less secretion, less liquidy time, and the degree of digestion. And even, even the degree of uh, mastication, uh, the t uh, degree of grinding of food at the mouth uh, will determine the fluidity of the chyme in the stomach. زي ما حكينا المحاضرة الماضية إنه ال waves أو electrical activity responsible for the mixing movements at the stomach is weak ones, but they could do action potential at the stomach, which are the slow waves. So they're kind of weak peristaltic constrictive waves, beginning at the upper stomach and going steadily. The chyme at the and these are initiated by the slow waves. Now, these slow waves at the antral area become more strong and they could generate an action potential. In, uh, and this action potential will generate peristaltic movements that push the food from the stomach toward the pylorus. We know that there is a valve here, the pyloric sphincter, or the uh, muscle here, the pyloric sphincter, is tunically constricted and it prevents the food movement from the stomach to the uh, duodenum. And the, uh, per, uh, the slow waves here become strong and intensified and can push the food even at the uh, constriction level. There's some fluids and electro uh, contents will pass to the duodenum, even if it's constricted. However, this needs to stronger contractions to evacuate larger amount of food from the stomach into the pylorus. It's important to know that the, the sphincter here also adds uh, another uh, retropulsion mixing movements, uh, which means that the, this is contracted. So when the food approach this area and cannot be pushed to the toward the dunum, it's going to be pushed back to the stomach, giving a stronger mixing movement, and it's called retropulsion. Now, there is a kind of contractions at interstomach called hunger contractions. It is very kind, uh, the very strong contractions caused by empty stomach. Um, they happen, uh, these have mainly at the body of the stomach. And uh, if there is successive strong contractions, the results in titanic contractions lasting for about two to three minutes, and they can cause pain these contractions called hunger pangs and they usually uh, develop half to one day after last meal and the maximum intensity approached about three to four days after and after that these the uh, 
intensity of these contractions decrease. Now, third or second uh, movement, uh, peristaltic movements in the stomach is uh, to push the uh, chyme into the duodenum. And this is this happens mainly at the caudad area. And as I said before, the, there is a, the biloric sphincter, which is tunically constricted at the rest. So uh, this sphincter need to be relaxed. So the food will be pushed from the stomach into the duodenum. And this sphincter is regulated by kind of nervous or hormonal mechanisms. We will talk about them. It's important to know there is a, a function called a biloric pump, and this is important for evacuating the food from the stomach into the upper into the duodenum. Is that should be stronger than the closing pressure within the biloric sphincter, so this can and help pushing the food. The, the pre or the uh, the peristaltic waves are stronger than the sphincter, so the food will be emptied to the duodenum, and it's gonna, as I said, uh, add into a retropulsion function, which means the food will be mixed with the uh, gastric secretions inside the stone. Now, gastric emptying is regulated. So, how much food is emptied from the stomach to the small intestine? to continue the process of digestion and absorbing it tightly regulated. There is two factors. The first one is the gastric factors from the stomach itself, and it has minimal uh, role in the regulation. The most important factor is from the duodenum itself. So the duodenum will put more control on the stomach for emptying, secretions, etc. But we should know that the stomach also regulates its empty. The first one is by kind of the presence of food in the stomach. More food in the stomach will result in more emptying. And this is mediated by a stretch reflex within the mentoric nervous uh, system, resulting in relaxation of the pylorus and increasing, which means increasing the peristaltic waves intensity. The other one is gastrin hormone and the uh, release of gastrin will result in increasing uh, the secretion of the gastric juice and it will also enhance the biloric pump. So two factors within the stomach, the presence of the food and the hormone gastrin. Now, as I said, more 